In this lesson, we're gonna explore the functionality and usage of Azure Active Directory or Azure AD. So Azure AD is a cloud identity provider. So we have this idea of Azure AD, Active Directory, and it is an IDP, an identity provider for the cloud. Now, as a company, I have a particular tenant of Azure AD. So I, in my company, I have my tenant. That's what's gonna store the users, the groups, the devices, um, certain applications, policies that I have for my organization. The whole point of what Azure AD provides is it speaks cloud. In terms of protocols, i.e. ways we can do that authentication, ways we can do authorization, it speaks things like OpenID Connect. It speaks things like SAML, WSFED. And then for authorization, it speaks things like OAuth 2.0. So it speaks those cloud protocols that enable us to interact with all of the various other services. And yes, it contains the users for my organization. It can have definitions of groups. I can have devices known to it. I can have various other things grouped inside there. Now, although it has the word Active Directory in its name, it's not the regular Active Directory domain services we may have on premises just running in the cloud. The name is probably a you know, marketing thing, but it's very different in functionality. If we think about on-premises, we have the idea of, hey, yes, we have a regular Active Directory domain services environment where we have our users, groups, machines joining. But this speaks things like Kerberos. It speaks things like NTLM for the authentication. And I can interact with things like LDAP. Within Active Directory, I have organizational units so I can have this hierarchical structure into which I can place my users and groups. And in that hierarchy, I can use it to apply things like group policy. I can have things like delegation. So I could have different people with different rights at different levels. This does not exist in Azure AD. There is no concept of a hierarchy. Azure AD is completely flat in terms of, hey, the users, the groups, the device storage. There is no group policy. There is no native policy in Azure Active Directory. So although it has that term AD in the name, it really is very different. Now we can join devices to our Azure AD for Windows 10 and Windows 11. You can do an Azure AD join. Once they're joined, you can then do management through things like Microsoft Endpoint Manager and Intune to actually manage those devices. Now it is very, very common that, hey, you have your accounts already in Active Directory, I don't wanna recreate different accounts. So it's very common that what I'll actually do is I'll synchronize accounts. So there's Azure AD Connect. There's also an Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync where the engine runs in the cloud. And this synchronizes this way. So from my on-prem AD to Azure AD, then my selected users groups will have instances actually in here as well. So that's a key, key point of this. Now, in addition to, hey, I've got users and groups and devices in here, well, what's the true value of it? So the whole idea is we will have services that trust Azure AD for its authentication authorization. Now, we've already seen some obvious ones. When I create Azure subscriptions, Remember that subscription trusts a particular tenant. So it's trusting Azure AD, and it's gonna use the accounts and groups from that tenant to give rights to things. Things like Office 365, Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, they trust Azure AD. But so too do a huge number of third-party SaaS solutions. I can add my own custom applications. So I can write my own app 
that's going to trust my Azure AD tenant. And there are standard Microsoft libraries for that authentication, handling the various tokens I might have. So I can really think about Azure AD as, yes, I've got my accounts, I can do my device registration, I can bring all my applications in so I have that centralized identity platform that I can synchronize from my on-premises Active Directory, but it's also about all those applications coming together. And what that gives me is a central point of governance. In the old days, the network was our security perimeter. In the cloud, that really shifts to the identity. So the identity becomes this huge thing we have to protect. And so, yes, we have all these accounts, we have all these groups, these service principles for applications. We have all these applications trusting it. And yes, I can enforce things like strong authentication through my Azure AD, through things like MFA, but also what we can kind of add around all of these things, I can think about this protective layer of conditional access, which we're going to talk more about in a future lesson. But it's the idea for every cloud application, and I can be very specific, I can set certain requirements. So now I have this central point to ensure the security and integrity of my identities, great reporting, great insight, risk management, but also I can set very granular controls on these are the requirements I need from this single place for all of those different applications. There's thousands built in, but I can really add additional ones as I need them. So Azure AD is the identity provider from Microsoft, and the usage is really for everyone. Yes, from my administrators, I'm gonna have my accounts often synchronized from my Active Directory Domain Services instance. My developers, when they write applications, well, I can use Azure AD for the authentication authorization to my application. If I'm managing an environment and I have third party applications, well, I can integrate them to trust my Azure AD and what that gives me is when everything's trusting the same identity provider, my end user gets this seamless experience. I don't have to manage different sets of credentials because that's a bad thing. Ultimately, the user uses the same password everywhere. And if one gets compromised, they're all compromised. So in this method, I as a user, I have one credential. I have one credential And that is basically my AD account that is synchronized to Azure AD. All of these others trust and use that one credential. And I'm securing that credential through an Azure AD I manage, and then use its other capabilities to control the authorization and what requirements I have. So this is really a key point to help secure the environment. They're not having lots of credentials all over the place, but also make it very hard if they left the company how do I then disable them all? So that's the power of Azure AD, this cloud identity provider into which pretty much any cloud application, I can even have my own, can trust to give that user that single identity and a seamless sign-on experience to any of them.